Welcome to the Academy, a series focused on the basics of Star Wars The Old Republic. In this episode, we will be discussing gear, how to get it, how it works, and how to make it better. Gearing up is how you make your characters stronger in battle. If you're planning on fighting tough foes in hard mode flashpoints and operations, you'll need better gear than what you picked up while leveling. You can see your gear by opening your character panel. You can open your character panel by pressing C on your keyboard or by clicking the person icon on the menu. Your gear is on the right and the majority of your stats are on the left. Your gear consists of moddable and unmoddable pieces. You can't change the stats of unmoddable pieces. Your earpiece, your two implants, and your two relics. There are different versions of these and you want to find the right version that complements your stats. The rest of your gear is moddable. That means you can buy pieces that you can change the stats of. The big pieces you wear, like your helmet and your chest piece contain an armoring, a mod, and an enhancement. Each of these can be pulled out and switched in and out with a different version, each with different stats. You can also upgrade your moddable armor when you get better armorings, mods, or enhancements as you progress. There are pieces of armor that are not moddable, but these are usually lower end crafted gear or gear that you get while leveling. You'll eventually want to switch these out with moddable gear that has a purple or orange border. An easy way to get some moddable gear is to head to the GTN and when you're searching for armor, make sure to choose Adaptive from the drop down menu. To see what each of your armor pieces has in it, you must have detailed tooltips enabled. To enable them, press Escape, Preferences, then User Interface, scroll down to Tooltips, and check Show Detailed Item Tooltips. Now when you roll over your armor, you will be able to see exactly what it has in it, broken down by piece. To mod your armor, Control right click your armor piece. This will show the modifications your armor currently has in it. You can drag them into your inventory to remove them, or drag modifications from your inventory into your gear to replace old ones. Removing modifications costs credits, and adding new ones is free. When you roll over your armor, you'll be able to see the modifications item rating in parentheses beside the name of the modification. The higher the number, the more powerful it is. Some modifications are stronger than others. Better modifications can be earned by doing more difficult content, like operations. Operations also offer a very unique type of armoring for your gear, set bonus armorings. A set bonus is gained by getting pieces from operations called unassembled pieces. These are pieces of gear that you can turn in and receive a piece of gear with a set bonus. Set bonuses are special because they give you bonus help in combat related to your combat proficiency. For example, if you choose the tanking set bonus for your class, you get extra defensive perks. Collecting more pieces of the set gives you extra perks. The only way to get set bonus armoring is from operations. It cannot be crafted or bought from the GTN. The good news is if you are doing anything mostly by yourself, like heroics or solo flashpoints, you should never need set bonuses, so don't worry about it. To make your gear even stronger, you can add augments. You must first craft or buy an augment kit. If you're max level, you'll want the highest version of MK kit available at the time. To add these kits to your armor, you'll need to find an item modification station available on the fleet. Drag your piece of armor onto it while you have your augment kit in your inventory and add the slot. It costs a bit of credits. Next, you'll need to acquire the augments themselves. These can be crafted or bought from the GTN. The best ones usually have two versions, blue and purple. If you can't afford the purple ones, feel free to get the blue ones in the meantime. There are three main ways to acquire new gear and new modifications. Some starter and game gear can be crafted with a bit of effort. Some better gear can also be crafted, but requires schematics from operation and vendor gear and requires expensive materials to craft. You can also buy gear using currency earned from completing quests. You can see how much of this you have by clicking the currency tab at the bottom of your inventory. You can spend this currency on the fleet in the supplies section. The third type of gear comes from operations. The very best gear in the game is always reserved to those who complete operations, both by being in the very best in stats as well as having set bonuses. And once again, unless you're really interested in doing the most difficult of hard move flashpoints or operations, you really don't need any of this gear. So don't worry about it. Also keep in mind if you're not subscribed to the game as you prefer to free to play, you'll have a very difficult time gearing because you cannot wear the best gear in the game. You'll need to either subscribe or purchase authorization, artifact equipment for 1,200 cartel coins or the account wide unlock for almost double that. You'll also need to purchase a weekly operations passes for every character you want to raid on. These are both insanely expensive on the GTN and you will likely not even be able to buy them yourself with your credit cap. If you plan on raiding on a regular basis, I suggest just bite the bullet and subscribe unless you have a large hoard of cartel coins. If you're interested in the hardest content in the game, including the more difficult hard mode flashpoints and hard mode operations, you'll need to start thinking about stats, your statistics, the numbers that make up your gear. 
The following advice is for Update 4.0, Knights of the Fallen Empire. If you're listening in much later, or there's been another expansion or gear update, it may not apply anymore. If you're interested in running story mode operations, don't worry about gear. As long as you have a piece of gear in every slot, it will bolster you. You'll even hear jokes about the fact that you can go in naked without too much trouble. Hard mode flashpoints and hard mode operations are a whole different beast. They require not only good knowledge of the game and how to play your class and role, but also having the right gear. There are four main tiers of gear in Knights of the Fallen Empire. Item rating 208 gear can be crafted or bought with common data crystals, which come easily from all types of quests including heroics. This is the beginner level 65 gear. If you like doing mostly solo stuff, this is good gear for you. Item rating 216 gear can be bought with glowing data crystals or dropped from story mode operations. If you are interested in doing hard mode operations, you should strive to first have a full set of augmented set bonus 216 gear. Item rating 220 gear is dropped from hard mode operations and is bought with radiant data crystals. It's kind of a useless intermediate step right now, because if you're interested in running the very difficult hard mode operations or nightmare mode operations, you should be running the highlighted hard mode of the week to get easy 224 pieces. Item rating 224 gear is the best in the game right now. It is only dropped from the highlighted hard mode of the week and nightmare mode operations. If you're a serious raider, you're likely striving for a full set bonus set of this gear. Finding the right combination of stats for your gear is rough if you want to be min-maxed. Min-maxing is micromanaging your gear and stats to get the best output when in combat. Only players interested in hard mode and nightmare mode operations will ever really need to worry about this. You'll need to acquire a lot of pieces of gear and pull out the modifications to add them to your master set of gear, so you can get the right combination of stats. Remember you can get gear from three sources, in operations, from vendors with data crystals, and through crafting. Feel free to mix and match modifications from all three sources to get your ideal stats. You can also use augments to supplement your stats to get the right combination. There's also no guide in-game about how to perfectly gear your character. Players just like you have devoted time and a lot of math to figure out what the best stats for each class are. To view the exact numbers for your class, search online for Sutor Optimal Stats 4.0. This will lead you to a Sutor.com forum post by Bant that you can use to figure out your gear. Scroll down to the item level you have or are trying to obtain, then click the spoiler button under the Mastery Stim title. You'll then be able to find your exact class and combat proficiency. These are the stats that Bant recommends you obtain if you are at that item level. Try and get as close as you can. For DPS, the most important stat to pay attention to is accuracy. Without at least 684-ish accuracy, or 110% accuracy, you have a chance of missing when you try to fight an enemy. You don't need any more than 110%, so don't waste stats getting it any higher. You also want to get above about 700 alacrity as a DPS. Use Bant's numbers to find the ideal amount for your character. Alacrity speeds up your abilities' movements and allows you to do more of them in a shorter time. All DPS classes need to invest in alacrity. Lastly, DPS also puts stats into mastery, power, and crit. These things mostly result in more damage. Use Bant's numbers to see what an ideal combination is for your class. DPS do not need to invest in defense, absorption, or shields. If you see modifications or gear with those stats on them, they're not for you, they're for tanks. DPS also do not need to invest in high endurance pieces, so if you have a choice between something higher endurance or high crit, power, or mastery, always pick the one that will help you do more damage. Healers also can use Bant's numbers to gear their characters. Alacrity is a lot more important for healers. They need to heal, fast! Healers also don't need accuracy, since they do not focus on hitting the enemy at all, but power, crit, and mastery does help them heal better. Tanks have two methods of gearing. They either want very high endurance, which allows them to be hit for higher numbers while staying alive, or a high combination of defensive stats like absorption and shields, which allows them to take less damage in the first place. Tanks are in a weird spot right now. They currently get more defense stats in their gear than they even need. So try to drop defense as much as you can in favor of endurance, absorption, and shields. Because of this problem, you may find that non-set bonus mods and enhancements are more favorable than the ones in your set bonus pieces. Using Bant's guide is very easy as a tank. Each of the three types of tanks wants a slightly different ratio of shield to absorption. Tanks don't need any accuracy or crit. Dump power master at any chance they get in favor of other defensive stats. 
Min-maxing your gear can be an extremely daunting task, but it's very easy to do once you get past the hurdle of understanding your stats. All you have to do is find your class and combat proficiency on Bant's optimal stats list. Write that down. Find your character stats in-game that match the ones listed. Make sure you are in the right stance, are wearing the right gear, have a mastery stim on, and are somewhere like the fleet that isn't bolstered. Write those down. Once you've got both numbers, write them down and start comparing the ones that matter. For example, a DPS doesn't need to worry about endurance, so don't stress about that. Are you short on accuracy to reach the minimum? How about alacrity? Are you at your class's ideal number? How about crit power mastery? Are any of those way off? If so, you can start balancing them out. Once you know what stats you have too much or too little of, you can start compensating. If you have already run some operations, check your bank and inventory for extra mods and enhancements. If you have extra commendations, you can buy extra gear pieces and pull out their mods and enhancements. You can also add and switch out your augments to get a boost. If you have extra cash or the rare crafting materials from operations, you can also get up to 220 mods and enhancements crafted, or buy them from the GTN. All this augmenting and modification swapping can be very expensive. An easy way to make credits is to sell any materials you win from operations or to run heroics from the heroics terminal on the fleet. They are currently the quickest way to earn some credits to set you on the path of stat optimization. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Academy. Stats and gearing can be one of the most daunting subjects in the game, so feel free to ask questions in the comments below. If you've got more detailed questions about stats, I highly suggest to ask questions on the official sotor.com forums so people who know the math can help you out better. Next week on the Academy, we'll be talking about conquests. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to be notified when the next episode comes out, or to show your support for this series.